Hello, race fans, and welcome to Disc Golf Daily. Today is Thursday, March 28th. It's time to get caught up with disc golf news and growth in 10 minutes. While you ride your tandem bike later today, tell someone picnicking about Disc Golf Daily. <laughs> Easy for me to say. Tell someone picnicking. Picnicking. Tell someone picnicking. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we grow. Just let them know whether they're picnicking or picnicking. Today we will go over United rankings and you might be surprised. Or if you anticipate who will be ranked number one correctly, you won't be. We shall see. Now let's get to it. Our number one news story of the day, the Texas State Championships start tomorrow. Things you need to know, Ricky Wysocki is playing and Ricky is 6 for 6 when he plays this event. Done. Also, this was Sayananda's breakout event where she drained a 35-footer for the win, and she didn't even need to. She just did it because she could. Well, that, and she thought she needed it. It's nice when you can prove you have ice in your veins, and it doesn't matter. Meanwhile, Kristen Tatar apparently has been battling back and neck pain the last couple weeks, and on finals Sunday at U.S. Women's woke up with a fever and swollen ankles. Let's hope she is feeling better for Texas States. And to all of the players, please rest up after this event. It's a long season, and I subscribe to DGN for the whole year. Our number two news story of the day, there is a new DGN browser extension. This one was really interesting. I found it over on Reddit. Wild Runs Disc Golf posted the following. I am a software developer and thought of some ways to improve DGN. Speed controls, full screen window, and 10 second time skip. I have released a first version that you can download now on Chrome. I linked the video that details my process. You can donate at the link below, but definitely not required. And I have linked my full code repository so you can check out how I accomplished it. Any future feature ideas would be great as I try to make the site better. Also, it is by no means perfect, so bear with me through any bugs. His YouTube process video is very entertaining and info-filled. It explains all of this in full. It feels like a great add-on to our disc golf watching experience. Thank you, Wild Runs. Link in the show notes. Our number three story, Missy's journey to her first major. Missy Gannon's journey in disc golf began a decade ago. Uh, Just so you know, this is from the Disc Golf Pro Tour. Uh, Marked by a recent historic milestone as she clinched her first PDGA Pro Major at the U.S. Women's. She was raised in Beacon, New York. Gannon's competitive spirit was evident from an early age. But it wasn't until 2014 when she was introduced to disc golf that she found her true passion. Moving to Colorado further fueled her dedication, immersing herself in the vibrant disc golf community and competing regularly. Transitioning to the pro circuit in 2018, Gannon swiftly established herself as a dominant force, currently ranking as the number three player in the world. Spoiler alert for later in the show. With notable victories on the Disc Golf Pro Tour, including wins at Ledgestone and the Tour Championships last year, her prowess in the sport is undeniable. Gannon's remarkable achievements have earned her the moniker Big Money Missy, reflecting her consistent success and lucrative earnings. At PDGA Pro Majors, Gannon's Gannon's performances have been particularly impressive, with a career marked by consistent improvement. Her recent win at the U.S. Women's adds to impressive track record, which includes multiple podium finishes and an impressive 87% cash rate across 15 Pro Major events. Notably, her performance at U.S. Women saw her achieve a remarkable event rating, tying her highest record at PDGA Pro Majors and securing her among the top five highest FPO PDGA Pro Major event ratings in history. As Gannon's journey continues, her impact on the sport of disc golf is significant. From her humble beginnings to becoming a formidable presence on the professional circuit, Gannon's story is one of perseverance, passion, and unparalleled success, except for maybe Kristen Tatar and Paige Pierce a little while back. As she basks in the glory of her first major victory, it's evident that Missy Gannon's legacy in disc golf is destined for greatness. Thank you for a great article, DGPT. 
And our fourth news story of the day, I saw this on Reddit as well. Someone said, how is disc golf not on this list? Recreate, or recreate, uh, had a, a blog post called the 25 fastest growing sports. Obviously, pickleball was number one. Flag football was number 25, growing at 8.1%. Disc golf was not on the list. And the question from the Redditor was, how is that possible? Two things. First, it is quite possible that disc golf is not growing fast enough right now to be on this list. Although, even with the COVID drop-off, it feels like we are growing faster than 8.1%. Second, the real reason we are not on this list is because we don't pay the Sports and Fitness Industry Association to measure us. That's the SFIA. This is in place, in my opinion, for the PDGA to take a leadership role and shell out some money that will, in the long term, pay off through corporate partnerships, marketing, and having good information about our sport. If you know someone at the PDGA, ask them to join the SFIA and get disc golf noticed. Our final news story of the day comes to us from the Daily Sun in the Villages, Florida. A different kind of Easter basket. Winter is melting away to spring, giving villagers, these are people who live at the village, or the villages, uh, and their families an opportunity to spend more time outside. On Tuesday, Camp Villages and the Villages Chain Gang Disc Golf Group teamed up for a morning of disc golf at the Everglades Recreation Center Utility Field. Villagers brought their older kids to try out the sport and spend some quality time together. There ended up being six families playing, and the chain gang gave each group a member to teach them the rules and techniques. This is a feel-good story about bringing families together to experience time in nature. Thank you to the chain gang and the Daily Sun for showing us another way to enjoy Easter baskets. And a call out to my mom. She lives in an active retirement subdivision in Virginia and started a disc golf club about a year ago, maybe two. She's got about a dozen people that are active, and usually four to eight come to play once a week. If you or your parents are older and they want to play with people of their own age, find a young'un who will give a couple free lessons, tell your friends about it, in a little bit you'll have a consistent group of people to play with. Afterwards, you can enjoy Mahjong or Scrabble knowing you've got your exercise, and maybe card it a par or two. Now let's get to those world rankings. All right, our United Rankings of Disc Golf take into account my personal ranking system, Stat Mando, Power Rankings, the MPO rating or FPO ratings, and PDGA's rankings. On the men's side, there's been basically no movement. Calvin, Gannon, and Ricky are one, two, and three. On the women's side, we had some pretty interesting stuff happening. Kristen Tatar got sixth, but she did it at a major. That was a bad time to get sixth place. Plus, Owen Scoggins has been on a tear, winning two of her last four events, getting second and fourth. In the world rankings, on United rankings on the women's side, our new number one player in the world is Owen Scoggins. She has 85 United rankings points. Kristen Tatar has 75, and Missy Gannon has 45. If you thought Kristen would still be number one, which I thought earlier in the week, then you got surprised. Congratulations to Owen and Kristen and Missy and everybody else that has ever played disc golf in their life. You are wonderful. That's it for us today. If you have any thoughts, news, or opinions, shoot us an email. Disc Golf Daily at AOL.com. Have fun, throw them straight, and hit the thin gap.